Hi there, and welcome to Arts Westchester's Virtual Arts Workshops. My name is Lana Yu. I'm an Arts Westchester teaching artist. Today, I want to show you how to make unique handmade stencils in a technique that I developed just for you for this class. Um, as a mixed media artist that likes to work in collage, um, I use uh, everyday materials, recycled materials, to build up the surface, uh, to create texture and form. Uh, but today I'm going to be doing the same process, but instead of um, using the collage for collage sake, uh, we're going to access the negative space or the space around the collage in which to make the stencil in sort of a resist technique. So more about that later. Um, the other exciting thing I want to show you today is how to make your own paint from plants. Um, these plants could be uh, from food you have in the kitchen, um, food you can get at the market, or even grow in your own garden. So let's get started. So first we're going to start with the um, recycled paperboard scraps. Here's a piece of, um, of a cardboard box. I'm just going to cut up. Just start cutting shapes. I'm going to cut some triangles. And then we're going to start to build up um, a form using these scraps. And they can be in any shape, but I'm just going to be trying to make a star-like shape. So you can see, um, I'm just overlapping these shapes here, I can start to create a form, right? And uh, voila, can you see that? It's a star. Here I have ordinary printer paper. Any paper will do. It could be um, fancy paper, like uh, rice paper. It could be real drawing paper. It could be um, recycled cardboard or brown paper bag. You know, the backside of wrapping paper. It could be anything. It could be fabric, sheets, old uh, scraps of fabric, actually. Um, yeah, I'm just going to use uh, this very inexpensive printer paper, copier paper from the bookstore. Uh, so to show you uh, this res resist technique, I already pre-cut a bunch of uh, segments. So in creating a design, I might suggest um, that you play with scale. Uh, so scale uh, is simply making things of different sizes. That's going to create some visual interest. Work with something called asymmetry. You can see that the design is not um, perfectly matched from one side to the next. Um, there's a dominant element and then two smaller elements. So, you know, I actually kind of like that. There's a lot of white space. Uh, it's very much an Asian concept in design. Um, so, you know, I kind of like that. And there's even like a, a gap there. Uh, so I'm just going to go with that. Um, and I want to start with um, kind of an interesting technique here. Um, instead of using an ordinary paintbrush, we can try using a toothbrush. And I'm going to uh, experiment with spraying, actually. Um, I have some pre-mixed beet juice. Um, I, I was growing some beets in the garden, which I had pulverized. And um, I added water uh, to make it into kind of an ink. Um, although if I was going to do it again, I don't think I would add the water because uh, it seems to dilute. The ink quite a bit. You can see it's very dark red when it's, it's 
in this container, but once I, I kind of spray it on there, you'll see it'll, it'll dilute a lot, it'll be very faint. Ooh, so you're gonna get some, <laughs> some puddles. This is gonna be super messy. So um, you can see I have a, you might notice that I have a drop cloth on top of my tablecloth here in the kitchen. Or you can just cheat if you didn't want to like do that forever. I, I experimented with putting it in a in a spray bottle here, and um, I'm just going to spray it. So there, spray, right? The spray bottle, and you can let it just dry like that. See how I'm just filling in the whole background? I think I'm just going to leave a little bit of white there just for kicks. Let's see what happens. And you can just like let it dry like that overnight. So um, you wanna make sure it's in a place where it's not gonna blow away or the cat or dog that's gonna come over and lick this or if you have an ant issue or roach issue also you're probably not gonna wanna leave this out. Um, so if that's the case, you could even remove the stencil right away ever so carefully. So there you can see um, we painted three stars by painting the background in sort of a resist technique. So here is the beet juice painting, dried, a sample anyways. Uh, you can see it dries to a very pale color. So don't expect it to be like super saturated the way commercial pigments are. And that's fine, it's just a very natural look. So for this next demonstration, I laid out uh, the collaged star with uh, the recycled uh, junk mail. And uh, this time I'm gonna use um, a green ink that was made from uh, the Moringa plant. Um, you might have heard it of it, it's a superfood. Um, very nutritious, packed with um, antioxidants and also protein. Um, I just started growing some moringa trees in the yard and I harvested the leaves. Um, it produces this really beautiful green color. So uh, let's give this a try. So like that last um, example, I'm going to be painting around the edges. Right, We were painting in the negative space. Next, I'm going to remove the collage star. You can see what happened. Hmm. Cool, huh? So, there's some different techniques that we can use here from filling the entire background to just making use of the outline shape. So anyways, uh, have a good time experimenting with some different plant dyes and inks. See what you come up with. And uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And uh, for other videos like this, check them out at um, artsw.org. My name is Lonnie.
you and thank you for joining.